for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mohit Kumar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Neha. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of ICICS Securities, I welcome uh, I welcome you all to Jyoti CNC Q2 F525 earnings call. Today we have, we have with us Mr. Prakram E. Jatija, Managing Director of Jyoti CNC. Without much further delay, I will now hand over the call to Jatija sir for his opening remarks, which will be followed by Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mohit. Good evening, friends. I'm delighted to extend a warm welcome to each one of you to the earning call of Jyoti CNC for a Q2 FY2425. Thank you for the level of trust and confidence you have placed in us in our journey so far. We truly understand the responsibility that comes with your investment and we promise to deliver the best of us. We shall start with company presentation and have the question answer session then later. In terms of a, a consolidated financial performance of a Q2, in terms of revenue from the operations from Q2 FY24, it was 302 crores as went up to a a 430.7 crores, almost a 43 percentage of a growth in revenue we are able to close on here. In terms of a EBITDA, EBITDA and, and the margin, let's say uh, on FY24, it was 18 percentage and is now today is went up to a, a 25 percentage. In terms of a <coughs> EBITDA numbers, it was 54 crores is now is reached 206.6 crores in quarter two. In terms of a operationals uh, apart, the uh, quarter two FI24, it was 16.8 crores, and it is grown up to a close to 352 percentage, and is up to a 75.9 crores, close to 76 crores. And this uh, uh, revenue from the operations in, in in the business mix, if you look at that out of this 431 crore, aerospace has contributed close to 38 percentage. Auto and auto component, our vertical has contributed to be 29 percentage. General engineering has contributed 16 percentage. Dyes and mold has contributed to be a 2 percentage. EMS business has contributed 11 percentage, and others are almost a 4% there. And average price realization uh, per machines we are able to cloak to a 41.37 lakhs. And the number of machines, what we have uh, sold in this quarter is close to 1,041 machines to be here. If I, if I make it that uh, summarize for the H1 numbers. So H1 numbers uh, from FY24 to 25, is grown up by 55 percentage and the total FY uh, H1 numbers has reached to a, a 17, uh, 793 crores almost over here. In terms of EBITDA, non H1 EBITDA last year was 14.6 percentage and this year has reached to a, a 25 percentage, is close to 170 percent growth has been clocked and uh, a 200 crores of a H1 EBITDA has been touched over here. In terms of a PAT, the last year H1 is close to a 3.4 crores. Uh, it has reached to a uh, 127 crores almost to be like that. Uh, each one uh, uh, performance in terms of uh, our verticals, the aerospace vertical has contributed to be a close to 47, uh, 43 percentage. Auto and auto component has contributed to be 28 percentage. General engineering is 17 percentage. Dyes and mold is a 1 percentage, and EMS is a 6 percentage there. 
and in terms of a revenue is divided into two areas like india we have a close to 55 percentage and we have a exports is close to a 45 percent in there in terms of the order intake in a quarter two fy 25 uh, uh, the orders we have seen a very uh, nice uh, uh, the order book we have received in this quarter and uh, uh, in terms of numbers, it is uh, 1,283 crores is the order in tech in this quarter. Out of that, even aerospace, we have received close to 22 percentage. Auto and auto component is close to 15 percentage. General engineering, we have received close to 17 percentage. Dye and mold is close to 1 percentage. And significant movement we have seen in terms of EMS, and it is reached to almost 41 percentage over here. And others are a 4 percentage like that. So in our uh, closing order book today, let's say opening orders was close to 3,400, some um, uh, 3 crores was there. New orders has been came to 1,283, and the dispatch if remove the dispatch now today. The visibility of uh, uh, a very good uh, future ahead and the growth uh, forward for us is to be look like to be 4,289 crores uh, orders are here. There. Uh, in terms of an order book, total order book today. Uh, out of this 4,000, close to 4,300 crores, the aerospace is contributing now is to be a 43 percentage. Auto and auto component is 15 percentage. General engineering is 16 percentage. Dye and mold is a 4 percentage. EMS is reached to 17 percentage, and others are close to a, uh, a 5 percentage like that. Now uh, we move forward to be, uh, let's say, to talk a little bit more about the Jyoti. So Jyoti is basically a, a first generation business and uh, we are into metal cutting uh, industries. We make uh, the CNC machine for manufacturing the metal cutting. We are fully a uh, vertically uh, integrated company and uh, uh, we have our own foundry. We do the uh, machine shop. We do all the component critical manufacturing in house over here. Uh, we have a, a sheet metal shop paint shop integrated to be there. We have our own uh, sub-assembly, assembly, and fully uh, controlled temperature assembly, sub-assemblies are there to produce the, the most precision uh, world-class manufacturing facilities has been uh, like here. In terms of our, our key strength is in R&D capabilities are there. All this our design and development, we are able to do it this in our uh, Leonardo da Vinci R&D centers. There we have a more than 140 engineers are working to designing and developing every day a new product over here. In the last uh, uh, two decades, we have designed and developed more than 200 plus product variants out of 44 product verticals. We have developed very specific uh, product baskets uh, of today's uh, uh, need of the hours in industries called as Industries 4.0. Our product uh, is uh, serving them as part of the seven pens. It's a fully integrated uh, design and developed over here. We have a very uh, many, many uh, AI-based tools we have developed. We call it as a Preci uh, 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 Protect. And uh, this uh, take care of the complete machine uh, through the real-time accident-proof machines to be there. And uh, we have a many, many solution provided, completely application-oriented team is a part of that. So it is always supporting to the other customer. Now they are In terms of our manufacturing capacity, uh, let's say the last year, uh, we were having a 4,400 machines. And now with this, our new bottleneck and uh, bottleneck and everything has been removed. We have reached to the September end is close to 6,000 machines. And this is fully integrated into one plan over here. And we have a one uh, facilities there into France there. Similarly, we can do in a same plant, uh, this kind of a multiple by three more fold, we can do that much of a space are available into existing plant at, at large port over here. Huron is basically our technology backbone. Uh, Huron is since uh, the company is established since 1857 is located into a central Europe a part place called as a Strasbourg is in border of a uh, France and Germany 
and uh, very near to the uh, the most world uh, machine tool builder as well as the most automobile and general engineering and the highest precision manufacturing area in a central part of Europe there. Because of that, we have a uh, technology access. Uh, we learn a lot of things from that so to make the sophisticated five-axis machine. And uh, with that, our product baskets and everything on a, a five-axis machines and all are, are very large there. Mainly because of that, we are able to cater many aerospace uh, companies to be there, basically. And because of the Huron, yeah, it's a very esteemed brand. And that brand value adding as a, a more and more customers base are there to us for the worldwide there. We have a, in terms of a sales and distribution network, we have a close to 29 sales and service center across the India. Uh, we have a two distributor and dealers are there in, uh, in India. And the uh, rest of the areas are Jyoti is directly is reaching to the customers there. We have a, a global customer base are there. We have more than uh, 60 countries. Our until today's installation has crossed more than 130,000 plus machines, mainly in uh, Europe and uh, uh, Asia. And uh, even we have a, a good installation into China, Canada, USA, and Mexico to be there. In terms of uh, our end user industry segments, I'd like to highlight you something more than like that because the metal cutting is required to the every segment of the part in manufacturing that. So we are covering aerospace, diamond mold, automobile, electronics, railway, agriculture, infrastructure, oil and gas, healthcare, pumps and valves, power, bearing, and etc. like that. We have divided, uh, our, let's say, a total of our presence into entire value chain. We call it the entry-level product. There, uh, we have a complete product baskets are there. Uh, total, we have a 200 plus product variants are there. We have a mid-range machines and we have a high-level machines. We have divided these categories based on the value of the machine. Let's say up to the 50 lakhs machines, we call it as entry-level product. In a mid-level machines, we call it up to 50 lakhs, and more than 50 lakhs, uh, more than uh, 50 lakhs to 2 crores is up to mid-range machines, and about 2 crores and all, it's called as a, a high-end machines like that. And Jyoti is in this entire uh, product basket. In terms of our client in aerospace, we have HAL, the Tata Advanced Systems, Airbus, the Thai, the G, the Avic, the Sikorsky, the Boeing, Safran. Rolls Royce, Bharat Forge, and in terms of automobile, you have all the names we have. It is a Tata, Mahindra, BMW, Volvo, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, Asok LM, Fiat. These are the our, and there are tier two, tier three. All the suppliers are, are there. In, in terms of uh, other clients, uh, let's say Arsenal, Mittal, Azad, Harsha, the Bosch, many. We have a more than twelve thousand uh, plus customer base are here. Recently, in the last quarter, we recognized by three different awards in terms of uh, one is iconic brand of India by the uh, our Times group uh, has been uh, EP Economic Times has given this uh, award and another two was into a, a best product and a display award into different exhibition in the entire of our country. Uh, road ahead over here. See, the India is, uh, in terms of manufacturing, is growing on a, a great speed over here. And our uh, assumptions are like that in the next five to seven years, in Indian manufacturing is going to grow. Today is around 14 to 15 percentage, and India is our total uh, our government, and everybody is looking to more than 20 to uh, in between 25 percentage. And there, the machine tools uh, are total. A growth are been anticipated more than 20 percentage of the CSGR in the next five to seven years here. India is, uh, let's say, is consuming close to $3 billion worth of CNC machine tools in India today. Out of that, close to a, a still 60 percentage is to be imported, and there the work uh, going forward is our opportunities are there. Uh, we have, uh, let's say, our vision and our mission is like that, uh, propelling technology and prospering life. And with the, a strong management team, world-class infrastructure, wide product basket, strong R&D capabilities, large installation base, global footprint, and the legacy and technology from Huron, 
we are looking to be a, a very robust growth in coming days and we have divided into this uh, let's say four uh, different categories today uh, uh, category number 1 we called as automobile and general engineering second is called as aerospace these two areas we are largely been established now and the third area we are developing uh, in terms of auto book it has been receiving significantly over here in coming days this is going to be third vertical it's called as ems in a fourth vertical it is going to be our future uh, and it is a nice area that all our r&d team is working in the next 2 to 3 years we will see the a good revenues it is in a semiconductor equipment to be there so these are the our four going forward is an four vertical for our business uh, segment over here uh, our right now we are uh, our growth engine is we are looking to be aerospace ems and now uh, electric vehicles are there and in future we are looking to be the semiconductor uh, industries to be here with the uh, in terms of a strategies for the next uh, leap what we are looking number one is to be a people development number two is to be a product development three is a market expansion and fourth is a, a manufacturing capacity expansion over here in a people development Uh, that's the key the biggest challenge what we are going to see it over here because the business is uh, the the way our order books are there and still the big pipelines are there uh, the key is that we need to ramp up in our execution capabilities and this all the capabilities are directly related to the people so we are working towards to uh, develop our own excellence uh, center of excellence there we are able to develop this kind of a people very quickly over here there so that's the, our one of the uh, the first strategy to be there product baskets is always uh, the new product because every day the customers are coming with the new challenges and all so our r&d teams are making a many a product on like that and uh, this year we have developed a three more product we called as a gu5 is called as a techon 4ft and ts120 these are the three category of the product gu5 is basically a aerospace uh, uh, machines a techion is a new techion is basically the product for the uh, ems and healthcare industries and ps200 this is the third product what we have developed is for the automation and for the more and more to a large production capabilities are there it's a twin spindle machines are there basically market expansion uh, we are looking to be entering now today we are very good in terms of a presence in india in europe we are now looking to the us there very soon we will have a, some tech centers and our uh, sales offices are going to be in a, within a one year this is our target to be there in a market expansion into the usa there in other areas like thailand vietnam and indonesia there also we are uh, working with the, some of the representative over there and we are looking to be a, a more business from that area also to be there in terms of a manufacturing capacity uh, it's going to be a uh, a big uh, a requirement that the way we have a uh, today's order book as well as we have a pipeline is available with us and uh, just now we have completed our bottleneck and all so our phase 1 we have reach uh, close to a 6000 machine as an per annum capacity and uh, uh, this we are extending based on this our uh, pipeline as well as our road books like that additional 10000 machine capabilities we are doing over here and on a same plant and uh, on a same geography over here and that additional facilities we are expecting to uh, finish uh, in uh, this two financial year this year and to uh, uh, next over here yeah that's it uh, from the my side i think uh, Uh, we will go forward on a question answer session now from here thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchdown telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankur from HDFC Life Insurance. 
please go ahead oh uh, yeah hi sir good evening uh, thanks for your time uh, i had a couple of questions uh, one on the uh, overall uh, industry itself uh, uh, you know while you said it's about a 3 billion dollar overall uh, machine consumption you said about 40% is domestic uh, within this uh, you know obviously auto is a fairly large proportion and given the slowdown that we're seeing in the auto industry uh, you know how would you see uh, growth rate overall you know or do you believe there are new segments like for us ems of course is a uh, fairly large and upcoming segment so if you could just help us uh, you know how do you see the overall industry maybe grow in the next one to three years uh, within that uh, you know how do you see or which segments are the largest growth drivers and therefore you know which one help us in that case yeah thank you anko uh, see the basically uh, in terms of uh, automobile industries yes uh, is the biggest uh, uh, growth driver for any metal cutting industries and uh, uh, for us also in our uh, segment over here also but right now in auto and auto area there is a lot of transformations are happening there and people are moving from uh, let's say the more and more on ev side and there are a uh, lot of new components have been designed and developed over here it's 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 a completely uh, a new arena has been open and more and more hybrid uh, side people are moving there and the more components are like that so they required basically for for our resumption like that we are looking to be more conception required in the next 3 to 5 years in auto area to be there and based on this all the uh, government uh, this mm. and all uh people are looking to be more and more on the export side all the component manufacturing is this people are exporting more and more and then right now in a china plus one let's say many of companies are moving to buying the parts in auto and auto industry also to be here mm-hmm. so uh in terms of the auto numbers is stagnant in terms of the construction but our uh, uh in our inquiry level and our order book in our component manufacturer are still investing and their confidence is so high so we are looking close to a, a good numbers are going to come a growth rate we are looking to be a 20 to 25 percentage on an auto and auto component machines also to be there in the next 3 to 5 years yeah other uh, segment what is uh, in india we are looking is to be general engineering okay so general engineering because of this export and all are increasing and a lot of manufacturing other areas like that here so there uh, we are seeing a, a good uh, uh, a numbers of companies okay. of course uh, the third area is electronic is completely a new area for all of us here and that is to be our growth driver to be there so in terms of a duty our, our strategy is like that where we are here uh, uh, let's say we are looking to be a 15 to 20 percentage in our auto and general engineering growth to be there and the rest other growth we are anticipating to the two areas one is the aerospace and second is the ems there i understand okay and so since you spoke about ems i think we got a fairly large order in q2 right almost uh, if i heard you right about 500 odd crores order in q2 yeah if you could just talk about this order uh, you know uh, is it the same customer delivery timeline uh you know what is the current order book how much of sales this year next year just some more uh, details please so basically uh, uh it is similar customer base are here they have a, we have a now many i i have told you in the past also yeah now yeah. we have a, three to more uh, projects are there and every project has given us this contribution and uh, in, in even the uh, let's say we are looking to be large number in terms of a, in an ems it still is to come and that is going to come on the next year too okay this is just the beginning over there and, and how much will be the current order book for this customer sir is it possible to share and what kind of sales so, are we looking yeah, for already the already let's say i have given the numbers over here uh in terms of a it's close to 700 crores now okay yeah, and this will be over how much time about two years Three years. How much will be the execution time? Uh, this we have to deliver in a one year time. In one year, sir. Okay. 
and, and just one more thing, sir. For, on, on our overall market share, just if you could help us, uh, you know, on the CNC machine side, uh, both on turning and uh, milling, where would be the actual market share overall? So overall market side in terms of, a, uh, let's say there are two areas are like that. One is called as a number of machines, okay, and value wise there, okay. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are, we are close to a, in terms of a, a domestic player. If I look yeah. at that, so market share is close to 10 to 12 percentage. And in terms yeah. of a total, let's say import and everything together, uh, mm -hmm. let's say our our percentage is only 4 percent in there. And, and, and also on competition, sir, if you could just generally talk, I mean, uh, is, is that uh, you know, fairly stable? Are we seeing any new entrants here? Or is it still that same consolidated share where the top five, six players are controlling most of the industry? If you just talk about competition for the top two, three players, all, 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 all are the same, all are the same people, all are the same manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. in the in these industries, I'm the last one has came over here as a new company kind of things are here. Right. So, so the reason I ask is because you know when we last spoke to you, you spoke about this whole import substitution, you know, happening especially on the larger machine machine. Sorry. So any anything there which you would want to highlight? Um, you know, I understand on the EMS side, of course, that substitution is happening. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, mm -hmm. this EMS numbers and these aerospace numbers, what you are seeing, uh, it's completely a, uh, is an import substitution there. Okay, so yeah, that's also an auto yeah, component in entry in an entry level product. The Indian yeah. machine tools, uh, the the yeah. market share is close to eighty to ninety percent, and rest are importing. So, our uh, in a Jyoti, whatever the growth we are seeing is is basically is in uh, EMS also is completely a imported area to be there. I get it. I get it. Okay, so great. I'll be back in two. Thank you. All the best. Yeah. Thank you, Uncle G. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshit Patel from Equia Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir. So, my uh, first question is uh, on aerospace and defense. Uh, we have received orders to the tune of close to 380 crores in the first half of FY25. I remember uh, you had guided for an order intake of close to 1,000 to 1,500 crores for the full FY25. So do you believe we are on track to receive that? Absolutely. So, so these uh, 1,000 crore or orders, uh, these are mainly Euron driven, mainly export driven, or does this include the domestic orders also that you might get from ordinance factory boards, uh, private players who are doing capex in the temple? Both are there. Both are there. Okay. But 80% it's going to be is from the, the Huron driven and mainly or export there in Europe area. And rest are we are looking to be in an Indian defense over here. And many customers in India have started procurement over here. Perfect. Sure. And just a follow up to that, uh, I believe we were doing uh, some de bottlenecking, some capacity expansion at the Huron level as well. So, are those activities over and now we are fully geared up to deliver those machines? Uh, that is, uh, Huron, this uh, new facility is going to be ready. Uh, in the end of this year, basically, still. It still is going on there. Okay, so uh, by the so end, of end of the year, our, our the Huron facility is fully going to be ready. So, then uh, what kind of revenues at the peak uh, fixed asset turnover that facility can do when we would have completed this expansion project over there? So, what are the peak okay. revenues, basically, we can expect from Huron? Yeah, after this expansion, in a Huron, we can see up to 80 million euro to be there. Understood, perfect. So, just my uh, second question on this uh, 400 crore uh, capex that you have announced, which you will do at Rajkot, close to 10,000 machines. So, uh, which industry, these machines will be aimed at? What kind of realizations we can do? What would be our peak revenues that we can achieve from here? Uh, these uh, capacities will also come with the inherent backward integration that we already have at Rajkot. So, if you can give some more color uh, on the capacity expansion, that will be helpful. Sir. 
Yeah, so basically, uh, we are expanding this 10,000 facility on a very entry level product over here. And uh, let's say this EMS product is also uh, is an entry level product. Of course, this is a fungible uh, kind of a thing. I can do a turning milling combination over there. But largely, uh, what we are seeing, and we have a pipeline over here in uh, EMS and with our customers and with the guideline what we have it. So we have dedicated of this almost 70 to 80 percent of this uh, facility is for uh, for the. Uh, the range of the machine is close to 30 to 35 lakhs. And, and this is completely a base at RAS code. So is an uh, expanding facility in terms of a foundry capacity, then machining and assembly and sub-assembly and our seat metal facility to be there. So the, uh, you will commission this gradually, I mean stage-wise, or this will entirely come in one shot, let's say one and a half to two years down the line. How it will be? So basically, it will be ready in terms of, a, uh, let's say, in a first phase, it will be finished with the uh, first bay will be finished and we can have a capacity to add in is close to 5,000 and the next will be like that. So within a two years, it will be finished completely on a 10,000 machine. It is not going to be a halfway like that, but utilization will start in between over there. Understood, sir. Uh, thank you very we much. A, we have a, the, the way we have order books and all, so we need to ramp up the, our execution on the next year to be there. Understood, sir. That is very well appreciated. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for answering all my questions and all the very best. I'll get back in the seat. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nidisha from ICICI Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my questions. Um, I have a couple of questions on the guidances that we have mentioned in the previous call. So, firstly, on the order inflow, we mentioned that uh, we would be getting orders of around uh, 2,500 to 3,000 crores. Now, given both the quarters, we are already close to six to sixteen hundred crores, which is on the uh, which is sort of higher than the upper side of the guidance. Would you like to revise that guidance for the order inflow of the quarter or for the year? Sorry. Uh, no, I don't want to revise that. I want to be stay there. What I uh, anticipated, and we are going to be delivering that today. So, would that indicate then that we would probably not be able to do more than about 12 to 14 more in order inflow, 12 to 1400 more in the remaining year? Or is it that we are just being conservative about what, the order what, what we are, What a guideline we have given, we will maintain those things. We'll okay. All right. And also on the revenues, the previous quarter you had mentioned that you would let it have a similar um, level of growth. Now, obviously, this quarter has been has seen, you know, a 55% increase in the, sorry, a 45% increase in the top line, but it is nowhere close to the 75% the that we saw the previous quarter. So again, for the full year, what numbers are we projecting in terms of revenues and fat? Oh, I, I cannot give you that. Let's say today the forecast is number to you there. Okay. Uh, but I'll, you can see that assumption like that, uh, quarter to quarter. You have to look at that uh, Jyoti to be quarter to quarter of the last year there. Okay. And you will see the growth on every quarter to be there. All this, all this. So can we uh, then, um, again, I, I know you mentioned that you cannot, uh, cannot really say anything, but uh, can we men can we assume something like uh, like like a like a two thousand crore or two thousand four hundred crore type of numbers for the full year. If I say yes, then you can say you are guided like that. Okay. That is <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Lastly, uh, I just had uh, uh, questions on the on the EMS. So these these EMS machines, as you mentioned, they are they are on the smaller side. Uh, so does that mean that these, uh, what is the margin profile like for these machines? When these, obviously now the order book is increasing um, for this segment, how will we see the margins play out when these EMS orders are executed? Will the margins increase or decrease? 
so we have a balance on that on a product mix there okay so we have a in a uh, counter to that let's say even in a path call i have given you that i have a three category of the product line one is entry level product mid range and high machines so in a entry level product i have a uh, let's say a gross margin is coming to be close to a 40 percent there okay and uh, uh, mid is 45 and uh, uh, large machines as close to 55 percent there so with this mix whatever the margin we are maintaining today i think we will maintain the same profile on coming days over there all right all right thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanidya from unicorn asset management please go ahead Hi sir. So first question would be on this uh, capacity extension that we are doing. So we are saying 400 crores capacity extension in two years, and we are also asked, uh, saying that we are going to raise internally and externally. Yeah. So I think our cash flows would be sufficient enough uh, for this year. It is sufficient enough to fund at least more than 50 percent of what we are planning. And why uh, two years? Type. Not able to understand. Can you explain it more? Okay, the two years is like that. Let's say two, it's two financial year basically. Okay, so the one financial year is this, and next, the next financial year of coming year. So, okay, based on that, this capacity will be ready there. And internal and external both are being given because almost we are going to do with our internal uh, accruals only. If any timing mismatch are there, and if we require something to borrow that. So we have we have put up over there into that, but most of these things are going to be internal accruals only. It is sufficient internal accruals to match this our growth to be there. That would be debt, right? No equity issue. Uh, definitely, we'll have a short time uh, line we may use. Uh, most probably, it is not been required. Okay, but while no, we are my numbers are uh, while we are planning, we should we should definitely tell to truth. So we have less internal or external, but it is not raising the capital to be there. It's surely because my numbers are stating you will have sufficient headroom for that. And can we assume that FY26 the entire capex would be completed before uh, the year end? And absolutely, absolutely. And sir, why is the delay in terms of the bottlenecking, uh, de bottlenecking that we were doing? So, if I see currently, you are stating for 85% uh, of capacity utilization for this quarter. And if I do the number, I am sure uh, we didn't uh, uh, use the additional 1600 machine capacity that we are doing for the de bottlenecking. So, what took us so long to do that? No, no, it's a time. It's a, it's a construction, the installation, the equipment, and the way the new capacity we are doing. Is the fully automations are like that. So the installation capacity time is required basically. Is execution time is required. I'm ready to do it if anyone are able to establish my plan for a 15 days. I'll be most happy person to. <laughs> okay. So should I assume that now that we are done, it 85% uh, utilization of 6,000 machines can we do for the next two quarters? Uh, you can assume like that. So that's why we are adding the facility also there now. Yes, definitely. And sir, uh, last uh, time on the TV interviews uh, said that we would be doing more than 2,000 crores of revenue. But looking at the current timeline, it looks quite difficult. Secondly, on what could be the maximum push that we can do on the average realization per machine? So the, uh, uh, today, average realization, what we see is the 41 lakhs. And in terms of our order book today is close to 50 lakhs. So in the next uh next uh, couple of quarter you will see the rising the average there and even after the ems book because you were stating that ems would be 35 uh, thousand uh, per we have, we have a combination of that now execution okay. is going to be we have a large order books are there and the machines okay. are in flight so aerospace machines are going to be uh, it's a combination of a model mix there basically and what kind of capacity utilization can we expect for next next year since the capacity would start coming in? So the, not the entire would come, of course, in the initial first half of FY26, say. So how do you, how much do you think would come in and what uh, utilization do you think? <laughs> so it's, it's basically when, the numbers, the, the, when, the facility, when the facilities are being ready, based on that, we have to, uh, let's say, calculate the numbers there next year. 
no no i don't want a number sir definitely uh, just lastly uh, so if i see the order book currently stands at 42 yeah, yeah, you, uh, are, you are you are you are you are right on on in fact that what you are asking there okay mm-hmm. only thing is that uh, let's say if my capacity let's say 5000 machine capacity ready by december okay Okay. Or 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 like that. Based on that numbers, I need to be calculated and given. But we are looking to be as fast as possible to capacity to be enhanced over here. There. Definitely, we will have more calls, and he can understand what's going on. Just lastly, on the order book side, so forty two hundred is the current order books, and we are expecting that to complete in like twelve to eighteen months. So may I say that forty two hundred is what we can execute in next financial year completely, and some additional as well. uh based on the capacity let's say uh, the one the my capacity will be installed will go faster there yeah because uh, my numbers are saying that we can do if we get the additional capacity so what did your understanding on that yeah let's say uh, if anything i'll give you the numbers it will going to be a forecasted uh, numbers i'm going to tell you you are on a yeah. track you are right on that okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much and all the very best all the very best. yeah thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kamle Jain from Lotus Asset Man- Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, congrats, uh, Jari Jari, for executing the <clears throat> what you have been telling. And this capacity addition is a, demonstrates your capability. Oh, the number. Yeah. Sir, uh, one question on the part of uh, like cash flow. If I see your, uh, you had a 90 odd crore negative on the other financial assets, which I believe is more of an unbuilt revenue, because last year it was like say March 2024, it was 180 and it has almost increased by 100 odd crore. So I believe right. it's more of an unbuilt revenue which we have for the EMS. Correct. Absolutely right. Yeah. So when are we going to realize that? I know that uh, machines would be in the testing phase and all that, and you have the Took the pain over the last many years, and you have established yeah. that you have got a big supplier there, big big uh, buyer there. So how the thing would be there on that part? So basically, you will see these numbers are going to be uh, decreasing in the next couple of quarter now. Okay. Because the way the the large machine, you know that every machines are very uh, big machines and all. A number of machines are in the pipe there. So once uh, it's been dispatched, and we are looking to be a large dispatches are in quarter three and quarter four. So you end of the quarter four, you will see this number will reduce drastically to be there. Great, sir. And sir, uh, secondly, on the part of your uh, expansion, if I understand correctly, you will get this capacity done by December 2025. Is it correct? The entire 10,000 incremental capacity. Plans are like that. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, like if I see uh, your uh, EBITDA per machine, like say it has come down to 10 lakh rupees now for this quarter. So going forward, what trajectory can we see on the EBITDA per machine? Because EBITDA margin won't give that particular picture because you are. Uh, Like say the share of the EMS and all those machines mid level or that would continue to vary. But on a EBITDA per machine, so where do we see that settling in? So I, I told you that is a 25 percentage is a uh, average uh, margin, okay, and that we are maintaining and we are going to maintain forward also. And the average uh, is 40 lakh plus. So you are right there, and we will maintain on that track. Okay, so around like ten lakh rupees, which is the current run rate. Yeah, yeah, great, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, and best of luck, sir. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Sanidya from Unicorn Asset Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity again. I have two questions. First, on the Iran uh, side, so you were saying that for last two quarters, we have been saying that the capacity will be completed, the extended capacity will be completed till September, and now you are guiding for the year end. So, what kind of delays are we facing, and anything specific uh, like we are uh, stating there? Uh, in a, in a, in a, in a Europe, uh, yeah, in Iran, uh, yeah. So uh, basically, the uh, capacity, the assemblies, and everything is is uh, we were initially will look at to be December. 
and still we are we are crossing the fingers but uh, that is some some delays are going on there okay and uh, in uh, some uh, installation of the some equipment and everything is being delayed but most probably this facility will be ready somewhere in end of december or middle of january to be there so nothing but highlighting like did we face any particular no, problem nothing, nothing is there any anything not a, not anything is in special kind of thing okay and uh, if i was i was looking at the annual report so we had some uh, unbilled revenues with the uh, other person also talking just to me so you are saying that that would slowly try to uh, come in uh, in the uh, statement right correct and uh, just above that there is interest in commission receivable from subsidiaries and if i look at that number so we have some investments in subsidiaries like joti ss we have some uh, uh, 60 crore investments and other than that also we are having some investments in other subsidiaries what kind of investments are these so basically this what we are expanding this facility okay so this mm-hmm. assembly building is under construction there now what we are discussing and going to be finished in january to be there Okay, so I, no, I mean, I mean, what is then interest and commission is from this? So no, no, you say the uh, investment there, correct? Uh, yeah. So if if I go on the uh, in the seven, uh, page one forty nine, one forty eight on the annual report, there is a section for other financial assets. See, the basically until today, Jyoti has fully supported. uh from here okay in uh, in a last 15 years and whatever our investment has been made over there as per the our indian uh, guideline we need to charge the interest to be there okay and uh, uh, all whatever the we non fund limits and everything we guarantee and so guarantee commission also to be taken from them basically okay and uh, uh, and huron uh, was not making the profit over there so they are not able to pay us in a past Uh, many years back so that is the accumulated uh, incomes are lying there basically sure there what is jyoti sf trans if you can have it so jyoti sf is a 100% subsidiary of our spv uh, uh, to acquire this huron grafen sadam there okay so jyoti okay. sf is a 100% subsidiary of a jyoti and he is holding the 100% uh, huron grafen sadam to be there Okay, so the investment in the Jyoti Assets book would be the Huron investment. Got it. It's a Huron investment. Got it. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Swanand Saman from Clay Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, hi sir. Uh, so my question was on the competitive landscape, right? So most of your competitors are on the uh, unlisted. So you have been pretty aggressive on capacity addition. Of uh, so, just want to get a sense on how the competition is also on the capacity addition part. uh and second on uh we have been again uh pretty good on the order in flow side right so is uh, has the competitive intensity uh increased in general with the cnc machine if uh the industry has been going at 20% plus right so how has the competitive intensity in general has been increased in terms of uh, order tenders or client addition uh, any sense on that would be helpful thanks also basically it's a uh, we are a main three to four competitors are here there is no add on competitor has been add on there and based on the india is increasing the capacity let's say the india is uh, consuming more and more machines and there is a great opportunity still because uh, once uh, suddenly the spikes are coming always imports are increasing there so other than me also might be all other my manufacturers also competitor also might be uh in a near term they will also invest and expand the capacity to be there because there is a great opportunity ahead to all of us also 
okay got it and uh, in terms of comp- uh, intensity has it increased in terms of if they have added capacity or uh, uh, do you find it difficult to get orders from your clients how is the competitive intensity as per no, it's, it's not it's not uh, that much has been increased there still there is a uh, we have a great rooms to compete to uh, import machines there So there is a great opportunity to, to us to compete to the let's say the people are enjoying the business today we have to compete to them basically. Okay, got it. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Vaida from Jiva Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so I wanted to understand on the CNC front since you mentioned you have 140 people in R&D division. So uh, I presume uh, the machine control unit uh, world over is only used for of three to main companies like Fanuc and all. So sir, are we in the process of developing that machine control unit from our R&D division, and how soon can we uh, reach there? <laughs> thank you for <laughs> a nice question there that is the whole is a dream for us for the future so already yeah. uh, our teams are working and we are expanding this team rapidly over here and we are expecting to develop something in the next 2 to 3 year pipeline over here there yeah. okay in the next future we are going to be having a, a more investment plan is towards to uh, the cnc controllers driving the process to be there Oh right, right, right. That that would be, I think, really help in increasing our margins greatly. Yeah. So basically, we are looking to be our core. Our core business today uh, is a is a mechanical part today. Okay. And Jyoti's uh, vision is to be there. Our core should be mechatronics to be there. Okay. So uh, mechanical and electronics combinations and many more opportunities are opening uh, for us over here. So definitely, these parts are in our radar there, and uh, we are looking to be uh, a good investments on coming days to be there. Right, sir. On the semiconductor front, which is our future area, okay. Yeah. How are we? Uh, how Jyoti is planned up for to uh, have this opportunity scale up going forward? Yeah. So uh, right uh, now. Right now, we already started to our at uh, many products on our drawing board, and uh, we are uh, putting up a more R and D team on uh, coming days over here. So that is going to be a great opportunity in coming days over here. So right now, two to three product we are designing. Okay, one prototype and everything will be done. We are working with the very close to the our the two three manufacturers come over here. we are directly in touch with them and and uh, we wanted them to move faster but this is also a new business for us so the design and developing time is long time over here so we are anticipating the business we can able to see somewhere in 2026 over here okay so we, some revenues would start flowing in yeah 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 right but it's a, yeah, it's a large opportunities are opening up over here Right, understood. So with AI coming up, uh, the uh, and our machines integrating with the entire software like SAP in uh, yeah. in your with your clients, so, so kind of scheduling or the kind of uh, parts production is it already done or it is yeah. being scaled up? No, no. This right now, what I uh, what I told you in my presentation that our product called as a seven tens. So there yeah. you can do the your factory automation and completely uh, you can tracking, monitoring and scheduling the, all the plant like a similarly to uh, SAP there. Okay. Oh, even right. even in a even in a even in a quite better in terms of a user friendliness and all because uh, uh, it's completely on a soft law requirement to schedule and planning. Okay. So that is the integrated part of it is our our product to be there. So I think this seven sense kind of products would be more of used in the EMS industry. No, well, every manufacturer there. Every okay, okay, okay. Right, right. Understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Sanidya from Unicorn Asset Management. 
please go ahead thanks again so uh, if we look in the huron uh, facility so this quarter is uh, is it take presume we did a revenue of 55 crore in ayana terms or in, if you can give any report yeah uh, in the second quarter it's close to a uh, 70 crores okay 70 crore uh, yeah and uh, what is the utilization this quarter for huron So the Huron is today. Let's say our plant capacity is close to a 40 to 45 million euro there, and uh, this is almost uh, uh, more than 80 percent of that. Okay, and with additional uh, capacity by year end, we would like almost 1.5 x the size there, right? Right. So uh, almost the capacity is going to be a double, but we are expecting to be uh, 1.5 in the next year there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, and secondly, on the EMS, so we received forty-one percent orders from the EMS this uh, quarter. So, is it only from the one player, or is it divided between two players? So, there I want to answer. And just from the, without naming any client, just from the uh, diversification purpose. Uh, so, when you said uh, basically uh, two, three projects are there, okay, and then all projects are a different client there, okay, okay. And uh, on the uh, side of, uh, we are hearing that display manufacturing is also starting in India. One of the uh, players starting that. So, are we supplying to them as well for display manufacturing their yeah. machines? Yeah, yeah. And for IT PLI too as well. What is the question? For the IT hardware that is uh, laptops, notebooks, all that. So right now, uh, let's say we can say that today is in uh, the mobile and to be a uh, the watch and uh, even the some computers. Uh, yeah, these are the our end users are making. Okay, so not into notebooks as of now. Any plans to go there? So already we are uh, uh, working with them and uh, mm-hmm. trials are going on. We are looking to be in future to be a notebook also to be there. Okay, so hopefully by next year we shall get the approval right. Yeah, I, I I told you that EMS is going to be our uh, target area, and uh, we are working with the many of them, and uh, one by one it will be covered. Yeah. And then lastly, on the US side, so are we planning any big clients on that side because the world looks like moving, maybe moving to manufacture in US. So if that story is to develop. Are we in the right place? Basically, to uh, basically uh, uh, because of the Huron, and uh, now we have a capacity increasing in Huron, and we have a now a uh, capacity in more model has been producing in here in India, and we are very competitive over here world, uh, uh, say on the scale. And US, in terms of the aerospace, is the largest consumer there. Okay, so uh, increasing our market portfolio and reach out to more customer to be there, basically there. Any plans for any facility in US or where else or anything? Yeah, so we are going to create a, uh, our technical center and the warehouse there in the US. Yeah, in the US. Uh, any timeline? So within the one year there right now. Okay, and any uh, we are getting any inquiries for the same? Therefore, we are venturing into that. Yeah, we are working with the many our large customers to be there, our existing clients. And uh, they are asking us to come over there, so we are looking to support them nearby there. Uh, do we see any impact on inventory and anything at all uh, if we venture into that? Because maybe they want in time execution, so we might need to keep some no, inventory. It's not, it's not like that. It's not like that. But we are, while we are making the the machines to be there on the deck centers, okay, as a demo centers there. Yeah. And entry level product, what we are making it over here. Those kind of a product only we need to be a stocks to sell faster to be there because in US people are looking to be delivery uh, very fast over there. Yes, exactly. That's my point because for any player that we ask, they are always stating that for US player we need to be some inventory so that we can absolutely. execute. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Okay, sir. Thank you so much and all the very best. Everything looks to be good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Kamlesh Jain from Lotus Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Number. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, like, I believe 10,000 capacity expansion is going to be there in a year's time. So, but uh, over next three, five years. So, what 
particular capacity levels we are targeting. Like suppose this expansion we would be 16,000. So going forward, what is our end target like in next five years? What particular capacity levels we are going to target on or embark on? Completely. <laughs> uh, see, the capacity we are installing is basically to utilize as much as possible faster to be there. Okay. And uh, the ones the execution will be increased better and better, we would like to utilize more there. But in terms of a, this is our phase two. Okay. In a, in a, in the next five years, this is not going to be sufficient to be there. Okay. So definitely, we need to expand further to be here there. Because over the quarters, you have highlighted that the way the China has gone in the value chain with regards to the EMS side. So similar levels, like can we say that it can be 30 or 1000 capacity by the like, say, by FI 28, 29. So just wanted to get a sense on that. Yeah, basically uh, uh, you are on right. We are looking similar numbers to add on there on next future to be there. Great, sir. And lastly, sir, can you provide a, a breakup between entry level, mid level for this particular quarter in terms of machines sold and every relations which you provide for every quarter? I have. Um, I can, uh, let's say, in terms of an entry level product, yes. okay, um, we have a 934 machines, okay, and the average of a 21 lakhs, okay, mid level machine was close to 88 machines, and the high end machine was close to 19 machines, 19 machines, so and total you. close to 1040 minutes. Okay, and uh, 2.1, uh, 21 lakh rupees was the entry level and mid and high level? Yeah, mid level, the average was 1 crore, 1 lakh. Okay. okay. And the high level machine average is uh, uh, 5.8 crores. Okay, great, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Participant, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions from the participant, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much to all of you. The way you have put on trust on us, we'll do our best over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. <laughs>